In this lesson, we're going to talk about the effect that heating and cooling has on different materials. It's important to understand that different objects and substances are changed as they gain or lose thermal energy. And the most obvious change that we can observe is a change in state. You can take a substance that's a solid, and if it continues to gain heat energy, it's going to eventually transition from a solid to a liquid, and from a liquid even to a gas if we continue to heat it. The reason for this is because as the molecules are heated in that substance, they begin to move faster, they begin to spread farther apart, and eventually it kind of makes the substance less dense, changing its state from solid to liquid to gas. On the flip side of that, though, as an object loses thermal energy, it transitions from being a gas back to a liquid and then ultimately to a solid. So cooling off or losing thermal energy sends that cycle in the opposite direction. Because the molecules in this case are moving slower, they're compacting together more. So it is important to understand all these different changes that can occur in matter from heating or cooling. Of course, going from a solid to a liquid, we call it melting. Liquid to a gas, it's boiling. Gas back to a liquid, condensation. Liquid to a solid, freezing. And then you've got a few cases in matter where it can actually skip a step almost. It can go directly from a solid to a gas, like dry ice does. We call that sublimation. Or going from a gas directly back to a solid is deposition. The other thing that's important to take into account when it comes to heating and cooling is this idea of thermal expansion and contraction. Because we know that as things get warmer, they spread out a little bit, the molecules move apart, it becomes slightly less dense. But that's really important to take into account, particularly for constructing a bridge, constructing a building, because a bridge is made out of, you know, a lot of steel, a lot of concrete, and it's a pretty big structure. So going from a hot summer month to a cool winter month, it can actually expand or contract a great deal. And because of this, they put expansion joints in large buildings, bridges, things like that, so that they can expand and contract without actually pressing on each other, breaking, pulling apart too much, and cracking. 